All right, uh, this was sent into the channel for a review. Uh, this is a, a TID Radio uh, TDH3. All right, so this is one of their latest versions. Um, it comes in the box with a charging cable and a clip and a drop in charger thing, all the normal stuff you would imagine. A uh, little strap, antenna, everything, everything you need. Uh, it does not come with a, yeah, does not come with an earphone, uh, but everything else. Um, so, uh, first impressions holding the radio, it feels very small, okay? Um, compared to, let's say, a Baofeng, um, it feels a lot smaller, even though it really isn't so much. It's a little bit narrower in this direction, but it's, it's much fatter in this direction. It's got a much bigger battery. Um, so, but when you hold the, both of them in your hand, this one feels way smaller, so it's, it's interesting. It's rounder. The, the Baofeng is a bit angular, a kind of a square thing you're holding, and this is like a nice rounded thing. It feels better, better in the hand. Um, so anyway, uh, it has uh, an on-off uh, you can change the sign-on message. So here we go. There we go, MSI guy. <laughs> we got to do that a couple times, right? Remember to uh, like and subscribe. Anyway, uh, it is completely programmable with Chirp, uh, and that's what I've done here. I've put all of my favorite frequencies and everything into it. Um, now this radio is available in a ham band uh, configuration, a GMRS configuration, and a, kind of an open uh, receive everything. I'm not gonna say transmit, but receive everything uh, situation. So uh, right now I have it in the completely unlocked so I can have all uh, program it with all kinds of different frequencies for receive. It has the ability to receive um, what they claim is eight bands. So uh, yeah, get this. Supposedly it can receive from 50 to 76 um, megahertz, an interesting choice there. It can receive 76 to 108, which is the normal FM bands, um, FM broadcast. It can receive 108 to 136, so it does have aircraft and it does have AM demodulation, so that's super nice. And then it's two meters and 440, and then it can also receive from 174 to 350, 400 to 470, and 470 to 600. So it's quite uh, an open receiver, which is great. And all, uh, has 199 memories. Um, yeah, we'll do some tests on it and stuff, but uh, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the battery situation here. Um, it has uh, it looks like two uh, 18650 batteries in it, so it is to probably to the uh, 2500 milliamp hours. And uh, I like the way that the battery that the battery slides in. This is where you would connect the. Uh, the clip. It has three buttons on the side, and we'll get to that. Um, and so, like I said, let's turn it on. It has a very nice large display as compared to something like a Baofeng's. Nice graphics. Um, it, it shows two different uh, uh, memories. It shows the A and the B, and you can hit the A, B button here and, and toggle between the two. Um, and then you can go through memory. Uh, I've got set it up for some aircraft stuff here. Um, we can go to, uh, let's say, 01 memory. And here are some GMRS bands. You could go to, uh, let's see, memory 31. So here's some hand bands. 41, here's some aviation bands. Uh, here's the fire department. And, and here's a... Um, uh, the uh, uh, weather. At 15 seconds, the coastal waters forecast from Pigeon Point to Point Pinos. So pretty loud speaker. Um, yeah, it's it's really really nice, and I'm going to get the bad part out of the way right away. Um, 
every other radio I think that anyone has ever owned is if you hit the uh, A B button and it points you to the A band or points you to the B band. So here you can see that the upper one is the A band and the lower one is the B band. Okay. And when you're on the band that you want and you hit the transmit button, you'll transmit there. And if you go over to the B button, the B memory and you hit the transmit button, it'll transmit there. No, not on this radio. This radio is special. <laughs> you have to hit this button to transmit the A memory and you have to hit this button to transmit the B memory. So even though you've told it to receive on B, this button doesn't work. You have to press this button for the B and this button for the A. So for me, that's a no go. I mean, I just don't like this at all. You may be different. You may like the ability to hit transmit on A, transmit on B, transmit on A, transmit on B without having to push any buttons. But for me, no, <laughs> I want one transmit button and only one. Okay. But that's the only real negative thing I can say about the radio. Um, and I don't know a way of fixing that in software. Um, I'm sure it's just a software thing that they could fix, but uh, for, uh, there's no way to like disable this, but yeah, um, can't do it. Haven't figured out a workaround. Um, Otherwise, uh, it uh, has a v VFO and memory, so you can go into memory, uh, go into memory mode. You can go into uh, VFO mode. It has a, uh, a scan feature. Um, so let's see here. Let's go into scan. Let me get rid of the. Uh, Get rid of the Noah thing here. Sunday night, partly one till midnight, then be one cancel. Lows from two, two. Okay, let me just set that to something random, and then we can do a scan on it. Scanning beacon. It doesn't have the most zippy scanning, but it does scan. I'll hook it up to the external antenna so we can listen to some of this stuff, but it does, it does have the ability to scan. Um, yeah, uh, menu system is real straightforward. Uh, it has two different power levels. We'll test that. And uh, yeah, let me, let me hook it up to the external antenna. Uh, so the AM uh, demodulation isn't the best in the world, um, but it doesn't have a problem with picking up the carrier and having a weird entrance and en exit to, to AM modulation. It does that well. It's just that the AM modulation itself isn't quite the best. All right. So again, to get into um, the FM mode, you hit the uh, menu, menu and then hit FM. And then that'll give you FM receive. And hit menu and FM to turn that off. All right, let's test some output power. Uh, we will be testing uh, two meters first, uh, 145 megahertz, and we're getting 5.1 uh, 5 watts at high power. Let's try low power. And 1.24 watts low power. Okay, let's try 440. And we'll do low power. Uh, two watts, and we'll do high power. 5.4 watts, 5.3. Okay, there you go. All right, well, um, I usually skip this measurement because all new radios are just fine, but I'm going to do a sign ed measurement for those who really care. So uh, I'm inputting one volt uh, of audio from the receiver, and we are measuring a four, usually 12, 12 dB sign ad is, is, is what people care about. And we're right here at 0.158 microvolts. So, uh, which in dBm is, uh, oh, wait a minute, let's see here. 
dBm minus 123 dBm. So yeah, these receivers are just fine. So don't ask me any more about Synad because these modern modern chipsets are just fine for that. All right, now we're going to test the uh, harmonic uh, suppression of the uh, transmitter here. So uh, we're going to hook it up to a, uh, a 10 watt 30 dB pad uh, to protect our spectrum analyzer. And uh, if we hit the transmit button, uh, we are getting something, but we need to set it up correctly. So we have a three, 30 dB pad in here, so we'll go to the amplitude. We'll tell it that we have a 30 dB pad in it. And we will say it can go up to 40 plus 40 dBm. And now it's on screen just fine. Okay, uh, we want to set the uh, horizontal now. So let's say that we want to go from, uh, we're going to start at 100 megahertz, 100 milli, uh, megahertz to uh, 2 gigahertz. Let's say that would be fine. 2 gigahertz. We're still on screen. Everything's looking pretty good. Now, uh, you can see there's, there's a couple little uh, uh, harmonics down here, but we want to see better than those. So we need to lower the noise floor of our spectrum analyzer. You wait, the way that you do that with uh, resolution bandwidth. So we'll set the bandwidth here. It's set to one megahertz automatically. So let's set it to uh, 10 kilohertz. Um, so now we have a much lower noise floor, but it has a very, very slow sweep speed. Um, so if we hit the transmit button, it's not going to see anything. Uh, so we need to uh, go here to trace. We'll do a max hold. And now uh, I'm going to hold down the transmit button and um, then it will it will capture that. And we can, then we can go back and measure these things. And then we'll hold down the uh, 440 and you can see that it also it also transmits. So we, now we can see the uh, we can see the spurs down here. We want to make sure they're they're low enough. So uh, I did a couple screen captures here of some measurements. So at uh, two meters, the DBC DBC means DB carrier. That means from the from the uh, biggest power to the next power, the smaller one. Uh, there's a 47 dB difference between those two. So you say that uh, the the harmonics are down 47 47 dB. And at 440, they're down 51 dB. Um, the FCC uh, rules and regulations about two meters and 440 are different, and they're very confusing. So I leave it up to you to say whether this is a good or bad. It seems pretty reasonable. All right, the other thing that I will do is measure the, uh, uh, the antenna here to see if it's a 144, 440 uh, megahertz uh, antenna and uh, I will put that on my uh, vector network analyzer and uh, give you a picture here. And you can see that uh, it is resonant at those, at those frequencies, but um, not, a, not a great SWR. Uh, you can't expect anything out of, uh, out of these rubber ducks, so it seems quite, quite reasonable. Okay, well, that was my review of the uh, the TID radio uh, TDH3. I really do like this radio, except for the AB button thing. Um, otherwise, uh, I think it's a I think it's a nice little radio.